Anemia remains an intractable public health challenge worldwide, particularly in low- and middle-income countries. Today, an estimated 1.8 billion people, or nearly one quarter of the world's population, suffer from anemia. Anemia is an indicator of the overall health of society. It particularly affects young children and pregnant and menstruating women, leading to serious health, development, and economic consequences. These include extreme fatigue, decreased productivity, loss of earning potential, poor cognitive and motor development in children, poor birth outcomes, and increased risk of infections and death. In Africa, the burden of anemia is particularly severe. According to 2019 statistics, 60% of children under the age of 5 and 46% of women of reproductive age are anemic in Africa. When it comes to anemia, uh, the key issues is that uh, the anemia prevalence has remained stagnant for a long time. We are not having any progress, or we are not making any progress in reducing the prevalence of anemia. In July 2024, the Micronutrient Data Innovation Alliance, DINA, together with MicroLens, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development in Eastern Africa, and Anemia Action Alliance partners convened an Africa Regional Meeting in Nairobi, Kenya, to address this pressing issue. This meeting marked a critical step in understanding the multifactorial determinants of anemia and exploring how data and better use of data can lead to more effective interventions. One of the things that we're really interested in is better understanding not only the prevalence of anemia in different populations, but what are the different drivers, what are the different factors that contribute to anemia. And it's important because in different countries, in different parts of the world, there are different factors that are really responsible for its etiology. Participants acknowledge several challenges in anemia data collection and utilization, including outdated data, quality issues, and limited capacity in data analysis. We still have data issues on anemia in terms of the frequency of this data because the Food Consumption and Micronutrient Survey we, we contacted recently completed successfully. It has taken a gap of almost 40 years to have this, this data. So you see this kind of time lag. And the other part is the quality of data that is collected through routine systems like health facilities. There are quality issues and that affects how we, we program and how we inform policies. To overcome these hurdles, several innovative tools and frameworks were presented, offering new ways to assess anemia levels and its causes and risk factors. This include the WHO guideline on hemoglobin cutoffs to determine anemia, USAID's district assessment tool for anemia, and Brinda's R Shiny Up and Samba tool. Country experiences in anemia data collection and use were also shared. For example, Countries like Senegal have invested heavily in data to guide their anemia programs and policies with impressive results. Au Sénégal, on a quand même beaucoup investi sur les données. Le CNDN, qui est un organisme transversal au niveau euh, positionné au niveau de la primature, a très tôt compris que sans la maîtrise des données, sans la maîtrise des données probantes, on ne peut pas avancer, on ne peut pas être efficace. Donc très tôt, ils ont beaucoup investi sur la recherche. The meeting underscored the importance of collaboration across sectors to tackle anemia, with a focus on data-driven decision making. From this meeting, of, uh, the lessons that I've learned is that um, data is very important uh, because it will help uh, member states to plan their programs. So uh, apart from looking at um, national data, they have to also collect sub-national data, maybe at district level, because uh, at times the national data would, would obscure the, the challenges that are being faced at district level. As the meeting concluded, one message was clear. With the right data, tools and collaboration, we can make important strides in reducing anemia across Africa.